So this is my favorite Batman adaptation uh, since, well, let's see, Gotham. It's my favorite Batman. I like this more than Gotham. Um, it is Batman the Killing Joke. This is my review on Batman the, the movie. The, this is the movie of the Killing Joke. My review on uh, the best Batman adaptation of all time. And my opinion, I'm I'm really excited. So the film opens up with Batgirl story flushing out Batgirl more than the comic is in um So, Batgirl's story is, um, she has a crush on Batman, but Batman doesn't know this gang member ends up falling for her, and she almost brutally beats him to death after she takes her all anger out on uh, the guy. Because she ruined the she, she the guy ruined everything between she feels like the guy takes her anger all the guy because she take, blames the guy for ruining her relationship with Batman after they decide to have a one night stand. Yep, they did it. They had sex, <laughs> and uh, Batgirl decides to call quits on being a Batgirl. And she saw what Batman was talking about, the abyss. And she doesn't know how she he takes control when he, you're down in there, that level of the abyss. being When you're that deep in it. And she doesn't know if it's like possible to stay completely resistant to it from the abyss. from And stay, and still stay in control. Still grab your, still have a grip on reality, your sanity. And not completely give in to the darkness uh, within you. Uh, so she calls the question. She does. She basically calling how Batman does it, and uh, Batman does it until the third act when he completely gives into the madness by sharing a laugh with the Joker, and supposedly my mm, uh, and I uh. uh well, supposedly he gives in the mask, but then we see Batgirl is now Oracle now, so he technically did give in to Mattis, in, into the madness. He just shared a laugh with the Joker, because the Joker is really funny. And, um, so he always goes to the next story, the, uh, the story that leads into, that leads, uh, in from Batgirls, or these into less ass, and that's the the uh, the stories. Uh, the next after Batgirl quit being Batgirl is now Batman story. He's now the main focus instead of Batgirl, and uh, he goes to visit. Uh, because he feels like he needs to Joker at Arkham Asylum. And he says he's been thinking about something lately about him and about about the both of us, how the whole scene is going to end. And he wonders if he'll kill, if the Joker will kill him or he will kill the Joker. And it turns out he's not really talking to the Joker, he's just talking about a guy that got bribed by the Joker and is posing as him. So, Batgirl, as, not nah, that's not Batgirl anymore, the Joker finds out, uh, who, whoops, <laughs> whoops, I actually just haven't shut the light off, sorry about that. The Joker actually finds out where Barbara Gordon lives, and that she's Batgirl, I guess, I don't know, it's not clear if she found out who, who, who Bobber uh, uh, 
is Batgirl is not made. I think, I think he found out who Bobber, that Bobber and Batgirl was the same person. Anyway, he paralyzed her by, with a gunshot. And he raises his glass and doesn't, and he says he has to cry. And you get a little backstory of the Joker. And it turns out he was a failing comedian that just couldn't make the crowd laugh. And he was in the rest bar with a pregnant wife. And he became the Red Hood right after he couldn't get out with the deal with these two bad people. And uh, he... Want, the reason why he wanted to get out of the steel is because, well, apparently his wife and the baby died while the wife was in labor. Well, not in labor. She, uh, well, she kind of died by something about the, 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 the wife died by at home. When no one's looking and, uh, well, the stove was on, I guess. So, not, so not in labor. Take a scratch that. Uh, um, so. He becomes a red hood. You know, he just wants to call a person. Call night. The, uh, guy won't let him do it. And he, the friend of his life. Because they're bad people, so he uh, becomes the Red Hood for one night, and and um this then he uh, runs into Batman, a much younger Batman, with a uh, different costume change, uh, different costume, and uh, he falls in a pad of acid and uh, he goes loony and is now the Joker my back's really bothering me so he uh uh, after the backs, we flash forward from present, and uh, we he uh, kind of stole a bandit, con killed a guy to t to buy a ban to keep up an abandoned carnival uh, that's sort of run down. And hey, if that is his new lair where he hangs out, and uh, he kidnaps Commissioner Gordon and. Brutally tortures him by showing uh, him naked pictures of his daughter Barbara Gordon when she was paralyzed. And he starts singing, the, uh, starts singing a song while this is happening just for fun. <laughs> Going in his little in shock and in silence, and and um, the joke is just disappointed because he was hoping to have more fun with Gordon. <laughs> but when Batman gets to Gordon, he wants him brought in by the book. So technically, he's still sane, and then when so Joker's plan failed. And uh, he explains the whole situation to Joker while he's beating the crap out of him. And saying maybe it was just you that had that kind of, uh, that, that went insane after one day. And Joker refused to believe this. And, and uh, Joker decides to realize he grabbed the wrong, and the gun that wasn't loaded, he grabbed the gun that wasn't loaded and it's just, and it just says, God damn it. 
Uh, you just all oh, what are you waiting for? Beat the crap out of me. Have your standing ovation. Go on, do it. You know what you wanna. And Batman just says, no, I don't want I, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want either ones to get hurt. And he's and he um, we see a more human side to Batman. And he explains how he really doesn't want to hurt the Joker. <laughs> But he keeps on forcing his hand to get her, 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 her to to hurt the Joker. The Joker keeps on forcing Batman's hand, but he mostly doesn't want to hurt the Joker. And he says maybe he has had a day like the Joker. Maybe he's been down for the same path that he's went down. And he thinks that he they could work together, and he could rehabilitate him. And the Joker is, is touched by that and turns down Batman's offer because he sees this it's too late for him. Though so he tells a joke, one last joke, and uh, it's kind of a metaphor for the story of how Batman and the Joker lives are. And uh, Batman gives him to the madness and just has shares a laugh with the Joker and that's pretty much the end of the movie. I really love this film I, a lot. I will say, I say this is better than the comic because the one problem I have complained complain about the comic is that Joker comes across way too whiny, bitch, in the comic. Like when he says the line, uh... When he's, uh, he says, he sounds a little bit too whiny in the comic. So, and yeah, he just feels like uh, the classic Joker in his full form when he's reflecting. And yeah, he gets sad and the rest, but he, uh, he decides to just go on with his life. And I really think that much about uh, the tragedy he went through when he was young, when he first ran into Batman. And he made a comment on, he makes a comment to hide the tragedy of he went through saying he prefers to have his like multiple choice if he's going to have a tragic backstory. This is kind of, I guess, I, I always felt like this in the comic and also in the uh, movie. This is a coping mechanism to live in denial about your tragic life. The tragic backstory, I mean. The Joker's tragic backstory, so. Yeah, um, I give this overall a 10 out of 10. It is completely awesome. The best Batman adaptation I ever seen. I feel better after reviewing it. Yay!